Okasama, looking at you now, dressed as you are, I find it very hard to believe what I've been told about you in Deadlier Than The Mail. What have you been told? I'm told that you're playing a killer. Yes, I am. A terrible one, too. I'm playing a girl who has been hired from her boss, whoever it is. I won't tell you who it is, otherwise people won't go to see the picture. To kill people and to dispose of people, as he likes to call it. And I do it in a horrible ways with poisoned rings a la Borgia and with blowing up people and just killing them with harpoons and everything. Well, I don't want to give the impression that all you do in this film is to, is to kill people. I understand you have got some romance as well, haven't you? No, no, I mean, they wouldn't hire me without romance, would they? It would be a waste of money. No, I do have a very nice romantic love scene with uh, Richard Johnson. But I get a terrible put-down at the end, and it's the first time ever in my career that I got such a put-down. And if it would have happened to me in private life, I think it would have killed the man. But there, I just say to my boss, I want to kill him, and he says, when the time comes, at due time. But it's a very nice love scene, and I think it brightens up the picture considerably. I think most of the location work you had on this film was done in a place called Lerici in northern Italy. Which was very nice, with a lovely coast, a very rocky coast, and lovely blue ocean, and good weather, which is very important. I know that you are a most proficient linguist. You have, what, four or five languages, French, Spanish, Italian, German, and of course English. But when you film in these languages, uh, in the countries concerned, do you actually speak them or get somebody else to dub them in? Yes, I always do, because I think it's the most frustrating thing to be surrounded by, let's say, Spaniards or French people and be the only one who speaks in a different language. First of all, it throws all the other actors who speak in their language. And secondly, I feel terribly inadequate, you know, not speaking the language of the country where I'm in. I can't stand it not to speak because you have no communication left, you know. Yes. Now, do correct me if I'm wrong about mm -hmm. this, but it seems to me that the image that you've projected on the screen so far is one of extreme glamour. There have been one or two others, I know, but mainly glamorous. Does this mean that on the screen you prefer to project this glamorous image? Oh, yes, definitely. Now, are you all for glamour on the yes, screen? Yes, I am. I am very much for glamour on the screen because I think movie stars, if I can use that word, it's not a very nice word, but I have to use it in that matter, should be something extraordinary and above normal, above average to the people who pay a lot of money to go to see them. There shouldn't be like the girl next door, like the boy next door. There should be something very much above and people should say, O and R when they see them on the street or when they have a chance to see a movie star now. Unfortunately today you walk by and you say, oh isn't that so and so, what's his name? Oh yes, look at him and they go in blue jeans, the actors do, and their hair dirty and in a messy way. And I think it's wrong. We get paid a very great amount of money for doing what is a hobby or what we very much like to do, at least speaking for myself now. And I think we should represent something extraordinary. Now, what we do in our private, on our own time, at home, is nobody's business. But when we show ourselves to the public, even when we go shopping in a supermarket, I think at least actresses of any kind of uh, name should always look their best and, and behave their best for that matter. So glamour is very important. Well, now, let's get back to Delhi than the mail for a moment. What does I hear about you being a very fast driver? Well, I, driving is a big hobby of mine. As a matter of fact, I've bought here in Britain the Mini Moog, which is adorable, and another sports car. Is that plugging somebody if I say We can it? say it. Well, and an MG uh, fastback, which I think is very pretty, which makes now seven cars we own, which is absolutely ridiculous <laughs> again. But I love driving and I love cars, and I think I'm quite a good driver. What I really meant to ask you was that in this film you actually are seen driving an Alfa Romeo. Well, the man uh, whom the Alfa Romeo belonged to insisted after he seen me drive that I'm the only one who can touch it because he loved his car very much. It was a brand new car. And so I drove it, only I drove it. I took it home after work and put it in the garage there and even drove our cameraman who had to take some very tricky shots in the car, from the car. I, and um, I had Jim in it, as I said, and did a little bit of, I would say, it's just half stunt driving. It wasn't really stunt, stunt driving, but it was quite dangerous, I think, and everybody gasped and said, oh, ooh, and everything, you know. 
But it was quite fun. I like driving very much. Miss Summer, may I thank you for talking to us? And may I wish you the best of luck with Deadlier Than the Mail.